So we've only been here for a couple hours, but I'm amazed at the conversations and the connections that are happening in the room. That's, that's really why we wanted this balance and the, the people in the room today. Um, an opportunity to listen and learn and hear from each other. Um, so that's wonderful. I'm honored today that we have so many guests visiting us from the north, um, including Kathy and Louisa, who are going to speak next. Um, we, we haven't met until today, but we've been connected for a while um, through Danielle and the story of the Kamsel and um, bringing that history to light. So I'm so um, honored to have Kathy and Louisa here that have traveled from Cambridge Bay to share a little bit about their family's experience and connection to the Kamsel Hospital. So please welcome Kathy and Louisa. I'm Kathy Aitnach. This is my mom, Louisa Beryl. We're both from Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. I'm 50 years old. My mom's 72. She'll be 73 on Monday. Just to, I guess, give a background of why we are here. It, my daughter's 17. She's going to be 18 this year. And She's my, she's, she's my only child, and you think about your ancestry when you have children, and so I used to sit there and wonder, we didn't ha have grandparents, so I used to sit and ask my mom, sorry. <laughs> I used to sit and ask my mom, where are her parents? And one of the things was, I knew her mom died when she was nine, out on the land in Perry River. And she said her dad went on the airplane and never came back. So when, when Toby was just a, a year old, I started searching, trying to figure out where my grandfather is and how old he was. Um, I shared a story earlier that I got really sick in January when I was on duty travel in Edmonton and here I am 50, my daughter's 17. My mom was 17 when he left, he was 50 years old and I was like, oh, OMG, I'm reliving my grandfather's and my mom's life here. But at least somebody knew where I was, somebody's going to take me home. So I read da Danielle's blog, must be two years ago, when she had said the, the 91 names at St. Albert Cemetery, and I, I emailed her and I said, can you check to see if my grandfather's name's on here? Here's our story. He left when my mom was 17. He never came back. He came to Edmonton, stayed at the Charles Campbell Hospital, and he never came back. So she. We emailed, we've been emailing back and forth for two years now. And in December, she sent me an email. She attached photocopies. We found his death certificate. We found where he's buried. We found an obituary from the Edmonton Journal. And for 17 years, it's been off and on the radar for my radar in searching for him and to find out that we, we know where he is we know where he's buried we're going to go look on monday we're going to go to the winterburn cemetery to try and find him if we can't find him at least we know where he's buried and he where he's buried the story behind my grandfather he came down to get prosthetics for his feet he got very sick as a, as a young boy out on the land, summertime, springtime, and he went into a coma while he was out on the land. He was with his older brother, they were out hunting. His brother couldn't carry him back to the camp, so he left him, went to go get his parents to go get him back, so he was out on the land for how many days, and in the winter, or in the summer, spring, You've got these waterproof gummies, mucklucks, and being out exposed 
outside, his feet got infected. So he had no toes on one side. They cut off his toes, cut off half of his foot. So then my grandfather had prosthetics that he had made or done or worked to put in his stomachs, and that's how he walked. So we knew that's how he, how he looked, and I always sat and I said, Danielle, somebody must know information. He had no toes on one foot, half a foot, the other. There's somebody should know where he is or have information and that sort of thing. So we're here to try and figure out what happened. He didn't have TB. He came down for, to get prosthetics for his shoes, and we sit there and wonder, how does somebody die from that? And that's, you know, we'll get answers, but as long as we can find where he's buried, me and my mom are, are happy. Our family's going to be happy. Because we sit there and wonder, oh, I've got si younger siblings. I'm the oldest of my moms, but my mom has adopted children who are older than me. And just that connection, we need to find that connection to find who we, who we are, who our grandparents are. I'll let my mom speak, I'm getting too nervous here. I don't really know what to say, but I could talk about my dad. My mom died when I was nine years old. He raised me and started, let me stay with the, a man when I was 15 because they asked, asked him. So I wanted to be a little kid yet to my dad. But I had to live with the man and I was only 15 years old, and um, first I was 17 and I was going to have my own baby, oldest baby. I was in Cambridge Bay from Perry River because of doctors came by the plane and because of, so other people went to admitting right away, but they leave my dad and came with me, I think, waited for him to, I could have a baby. After I had a baby a few days later, and he was going to come to admitting camps for hospital for his feet, so he could have shoes and boots like this. and. Um, Pick him up by the truck and he looked at me. He looked at me back. I raised you when you had no mother. I wanted to come back to see you. But some people died in the hospital. I don't know I'm going to come back. Last word I heard that. After he went out, I started crying. But after nine months, I heard he passed away. Some people in the hospital, too, and at the Charles Gavsa Hospital. One guy was telling me, all night calling me, till he stopped breathing. He was calling me all night. That night we were sleeping and a man, I think that night after he passed away and a man I was living with, when we get up, he asked me, did you hear something landed on the outside the igloo really loud last night, he said. I said, no, I never hear it. I was too young. So, 
after that, a few days later, Doc Dimp came in and they told us my dad passed away. I think somehow he landed on outside the igloo. All these years, I wanted to look for my dad's grave. I never asked anybody when I traveling around with other people and I see the cemeteries. I really wanted to look for my dad. But my daughter helping me so finally we start looking for it. I'm glad I came here, somebody telling us to come here, so I'm glad I'm be here. I don't really know what to say, but... <sighs> My mom died, my heart broken. My dad died, my heart broken. My husband died, my heart broken. I'm just gonna live as long as I could live. Go on. <laughs>